hey guys welcome back to the channel if you're new to the channel my name is precious and i am a second year emergency medicine resident so today's video is going to be all about study tips um and it's not necessarily geared towards medical school study tips it can be on whatever program that you're in i know now we're in august so we're getting towards that back to school time some of you may be starting new programs so i feel like now is a great time to give you guys five tips for studying um in whatever program that you are all right, so tip number one, find out what's your learning style. So are you an auditory learner? Are you a visual learner? Are you a kinesthetic learner? So auditory, do you like listening to things? Do you like reading your notes out loud, out loud maybe to yourself or others? Um, visual, do you like seeing things? Do you like drawing out pictures, drawing out diagrams? Um, kinesthetic, do you like tactile? Do you like um, technical skills and being active and doing things? So find out what you're most comfortable with and then that can help best um, suit you when it comes to studying. A lot of students can struggle with this when it comes to first starting out, um, but if you're transitioning to a new program, maybe you just got accepted to nursing school or you're just starting medical school, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You got here for a reason. So those things that helped you previously, you can still transition those things over. But if you're just starting out in whatever program you are, just figure out what works best for you, what suits you best, and then carry that on with all the studying that you do. So tip number two, incorporate practice questions early. Practice questions is a great way to, you know, gain confidence about what you do know and learn what you don't know and what you still need to learn more of. Um, so I recommend um, either doing weekly practice questions or daily practice questions. Oftentimes it's not about the knowledge that we have or what we know, but it's about those test taking strategies. Doing practice questions early on and often can really help us figure out, um, you know, the gaps that we may be having in some of the studying that we're doing. So practice questions can really gear you towards maybe certain areas that you should spend more time on and certain areas they should spend less time on. For example, if you keep doing practice questions and there's this one specific topic, example cardiology, where you keep missing questions, maybe you need to go back to the basics, take it back to the textbook, go back to your lectures and reread that section section again. So Oftentimes, I think we get bogged down with reading, 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 and we forget to incorporate those practice questions. And then when exam time comes, we may think we have all that knowledge, but we haven't practiced those test taking skills. So the more questions you see, the earlier you, you do questions, the better you will be. So incorporate practice questions early. And when you're doing your practice questions, make sure you're learning from those answer explanations. Within the explanations, you can learn so much, not only why one answer is right, but why the other answers are wrong. Tip number three, use resources that increase your efficiency. So you should have maybe two to three go-to resources. Don't resource overload. Don't get five to six different resources because at that point it just becomes unproductive. Get two to three solid resources. If you're in medical school, you guys all know about the holy grail of first aid. That's like the general review book that most medical students will use. And then there's a couple other ones that you may add such as Pathoma. Um, one that I love is Picmonic. Picmonic is definitely a way that you can study efficiently. So Picmonic is an audio um, visual uh, learning online platform that helps you memorize large volumes of information such as anatomy or pathology or pharmacology or microbiology. Um, so essentially they have um, different images and stories and and within that, they have different characters and clues that help you memorize things. Um, I use Picmonic throughout medical school. I always recommend it to students who are studying, um, whether it's board exams or studying for um, in-school lectures or exams. It's just a great way to memorize large volumes of information. Um, unfortunately or fortunately, a lot of medical school information is just wrote um, memorization that you just have to know the key facts and finding resources that help you study efficiently and effectively will definitely help you in the long run. So some of the features that I love about Picmonic is um, they incorporate first aid and it's kind of like page by page um, you can now find a Picmonic reference. Like I mentioned, first aid is one of the common resources that medical students use so it can go hand in hand with Picmonic. So if you're studying one page of first aid, you can find a Picmonic that then relates it. You can bring those two resources together and that just further solidifies the information that you have. Another great feature that they have is um, incorporating Anki decks into Picmonic. So if you use Anki for memorization, this is is um, also another um, popular resource that a lot of students use. Anki and Picmonic also go hand in hand. I made a video about that um, previously and I will link that above. Tip number four, space repetition. 
if you're gonna learn the material and solidify it into your brain and have that uh, information there to tap into on exam day, you have to see it often. You can't see it on day one and then never review it again because you're going to lose that information when it comes time to take your exam. So spaced repetition means seeing the information over multiple days, seeing it over multiple passes. So if I have a lecture on day one, I'm also gonna review that lecture on day two, day four, day seven. I'm gonna space it out so that I'm consistently and continually seeing that information so that it sticks within my mind. So make sure that you're seeing the information early, you're seeing it often, and re you're making sure that you're reviewing it enough. And what can really help with making sure that you're doing space repetition properly is putting it in your planner. So let's say cardiology lecture, pencil it in. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm reviewing cardiology. Um, if you have maybe um, pulmonology, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I'm reviewing pulmonology. So it really helps if you just map it out and that can really help you speak, stick to that space repetition schedule. And tip number five, plan and breaks. You have to avoid burnout. So working too long on one task can decrease your performance. There is a such thing as um, diminishing returns. So you have to plan in breaks. And I feel like once you have that break, you can return to your study session just a bit rejuvenized and with more energy. So if you continue to study, study, study with no interrupted time, with no breaks or anything like that, eventually you will burn out and you won't be studying effectively. So I know it seems like your life has to be dedicated to studying and there's nothing else that you can kind of um, focus on, but you have to have a life outside of your studies you have to be able to plan in different activities and overall this will help you be a better student when you have those other activities and breaks that you can enjoy so it's not going to be easy in the beginning um, you may struggle with how to find that balance how to take those breaks but I just recommend penciling it in like if you have a let's say a hour by hour to-do list for Monday within that hour somewhere it needs to be a break or let's say you make um, weekly schedules. Maybe you take one day off a week to just enjoy, relax, to have self-care. That is essential. You have to take care of yourself so that you can be the best student that you can be. All right, guys, so those are my five study tips for the upcoming school year. I wish you all a successful school year. Just remember, somebody has done it before you. You are capable. If you ever need help, make sure you reach out to your fellow classmates, to your professors. My inbox is always open as well. If you guys have any other study tips that you feel are useful, leave it in the comment section below so you can help someone out. I'll see you next time. Bye.